from IIT BHU Varanasi. I'm working under Professor Franz, and I'm being also supervised by Dr. Pearl Larson, who is also working on the same project at Advising Me. Um, so my project is on normalization of diversified error reporting and software diversity. Now, why should you really care about my project? <laughs> now, the question is that this pic really speaks everything about it. You, the, and as Mihaly and Chris, Chris did really speak about, you, we are concerned with security threats. We also heard about heart bleed. We also heard about the target breach. We also heard about LinkedIn passwords being cracked. So security is essential, and we need really to look forward to this project. Um, now, this is one thing, like what exactly the SSL lab does is, now, this is the software monoculture, what exists today in, uh, in the software industries. We have software monoculture, so essentially we have the same binaries for every software we have installed. So the same binaries, if, if any such device running such software is compromised by an attacker, the attacker can use the same kind of attacks to compromise all of the devices running that same software. Um, and what the SSL lab does is this thing. So you have diversified the binaries, now, if, if the attacker can compromise just one binary, he cannot compromise the rest of the binaries because binaries are different now. We have diversified them. And as Professor Frank said, that the whole is now different across different, across different binaries. So, the challenge in fault. Now, unfortunately, it so happens that software diversity, uh, diversity plays with your error reporting stuff. For example, when Firefox crashes, you see a pop-up window, which is basically a break right client for which, which, from which you summary your crash report to your Mozilla server. Now, if you are having different binaries, definitely the error, the same error, will be reported differently by the different variants of the of the Firefox. Sorry. So here's what I'm going to talk about. Like, there's like this is the Google uh, breakback client side. What happens is basically there's a build system. You strip off the debug information and put the rest of the information to the user system. And if there's a crash report, it compiles with uh, it goes and um, sticks with the debug information. And you can actually you know the, there's many with them and st start walking. And therefore, and finally, you would be having a human readable form for, for debugging your information. So um, the challenge now here is basically this. So with code layout randomization, the instruction pointer is totally different for different variants. So yeah, challenge accepted. <laughs> now what is the idea behind it? Now a solution could be like if we are diversifying the, the, um, the binaries by simply putting on, a, uh, say, a random seed. You could say that okay, let's put up the same random seed and generate uh, and generate the same binary again, and then you can easily debug it. But there's a lot, pro lot of more problems behind it. I'll talk about it later as well. So my idea here is basically we embed enough metadata so as to generate enough information so that I can get to know where finally my error is exactly in my original source files, as if it as if it should it should be seen to the server as if those error reports came from an undiversified binary. So what do I do here now is, um, I first started hacking around with the breakpath line as to see how, how does it work basically, uh, because breakpath is actually used with Firefox and Chrome. So uh, um, I tried to integrate uh, certain applications with breakpath just to make myself comfortable with breakpath. The second thing was, I, uh, the idea was like, um, I started giving each instruction in the binary file a unique ID so that you can, uh, so that this would, will, will be helping me in mapping the diversified binaries with the undiversified binaries essentially. Now there are some critical issues involved in this as well, though this data fairly works well with small programs, but it doesn't when you are doing it with Firefox. The problems are, like each instruction at the bit code level can become several instructions at the machine code level, adding another layer of sub-labeling. So it becomes a tedious task to do that. <coughs> the more complicated the transformations become, the more metadata you have to generate, and that really becomes problematic. Now the file size, like for example, the Firefox source code was like eight <coughs> bits, and, and when I compiled it, generating my own metadata, and that I'm trying to map around that that should have been 39 gigs. So actually, you're having a Firefox complete Firefox, diversified Firefox, which has a file size of 39 gigs compared to 8 gigs that exist today. So 
The idea uh, works fairly on small programs like a dummy hello world program, but it doesn't. It surely doesn't work on the the bigger program. So we are trying to figure out what else we can do about it. So it's basically like a one-way mathematical function. It's easy to compute in one direction, but it's difficult to do it the other way around. And this is probably one question that you might be thinking about. Like, why can't you re simply recreate the binary using the random seed and process, it and process the dump with an exact copy of the user's binary? There are typically four um, uh, answers to it. So the first is, like, error reporting server must be the same as that which created the binary. So if you're really talking about billions of users, you do not want to have just one server. You want to have multiple servers that can handle your reports as well. The second is there are security threats involved because the servers have their private keys as well and as well as the IP of the users. And third, and it's very extremely important even in the open source world, is the third party bug trackers are excluded from it because what you're doing basically, the server has the keys and it generates and when you send a crash report, the, the, the people working there and will be able to debug the information but people who are like in the open source world will not be able to do so. And costs will dramatically increase because, you know, with each increasing demand, it, the cost will be exponential. So, um, so now we need to move our research into actual practice. And so for that, what we did was to actually try to create a real-time environment within our own lab. So for that, what we did was we uh, started uh, generating artificial software diversity by compiling Firefox with our multi-compilers. Um, then I deployed a socro based server in our lab, which basically collects, which basically emulates the exact Mozilla server that we have at Mozilla, which collects the crash reports from um, our uh, from the, our diversified binaries. And for that, I ho also had to hack around Firefox so that those installs basically reports to my server and not the Mozilla server. And the same thing has to be done with Google Chrome, and we and we will be testing this thing with at the DBH, DBH labs downstairs. But uh, there are certain problems involved as well, so we'll, uh, we are trying to figure out how to solve them. But soon we'll be having the, uh, DBH lab actually having our installs, and so that we can monitor the stability of our diverse white box installs. So, and the status of my project is basically, yeah, it's under construction now, <laughs> and that has been now extended as I'm, I'm very thankful to Professor Franz uh, for giving me an opportunity to actually extend this project as part of my bachelor thesis now. So I'll be continuing with this project in my uh, final year back in India. Uh, so, and since Professor Mehrotra mentioned in the email as well, so you need to just mention something about your intern moment, something, so I have this thing, intern <laughs> moments about, so yeah, this pic really speaks about what fun I had really doing this internship. <laughs> we, we rented the car and went all around California. Where um, is this? This is in Los Angeles, Universal Studios. Oh, I see. So, <laughs> so my favorite. I don't recognize the fourth intern there. Who's that? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the fourth one. <laughs> the one in the. When the green. This, this could be the one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this stupid guy has always been my favorite cartoon. So I just added this thing. <laughs> And that's all, folks. Thank you. Thank you.